Hello, so here we are today, painting up this gas mask and sort of turning it into a kind of steampunk looking gas mask. So this is part one in this particular video series, and we'll just be doing the paint job in this video. And in part two, we'll be installing some LED lights just to jazz it up a little bit. So this mask, this particular mask, I bought from eBay, and it cost... Uh, around about six pounds for the mask so that's perhaps ten dollars in American dollars so you should be able to pick one up relatively cheaply so all I'm doing there is taking off the filters um, taping things up so that when we get around to what we're going to do is use uh, spray paint the initial coats and I'm going to prime the mask first of all with some grey primer so I'm just taping everything up there just on the inside so they get inside the breathing parts of the mask and I put some cotton wool, in, not cotton wool, uh, toilet paper in the holes where the filter filters, holes where the filters are the holes in the filters and the holes where the filter is attached to the mask so we're just preparing the mask here for priming. So there you can see I'm putting in the uh, toilet paper there just to fill the holes in. In this particular mask, the filters were, there were some little three volt fans inside, so I took those out. So there we are, I'm taking them out there, as you can see. And so we don't need them in this particular project because the mask is only for obviously for decorative purposes But those little fans they might come in handy for another project at a later date So this particular mask I'm making up here will be featured in a music video that I'm making sometime down the line I've also got a music channel, Moonrunner Music, which features music from, from Angel Rust, plus collaboration, music collaboration uh, stuff, and guitar riffs and techniques and all kinds of things. So spraying up there, I just showed you the uh, multi-piece mother mold for a dragon, so there's a lot going on at the moment, so between jobs. So there you are, you can see... I primed up the mask and then sprayed the mask with the gold metallic paint as you can see there so a couple of coats of primer let that dry overnight and then a couple of coats of the gold metallic paint and let that dry overnight also and now we're ready to add some paint effects so I've mixed up some black and brown so you've got a kind of dark brown there that's acrylic paint and we're just gonna liberally paint that over the mask and then we'll wipe down with a damp cloth so it leaves the dark paint in the recesses and kind of gives it a dirty look so once we've done that we'll leave that I left this overnight to make sure that the paint had fully dried and cured and then applied another layer using the same process. I'm kind of dabbing, on, dabbing the cloth on the mask also to kind of give it a kind of natural looking effect if that makes any sense. So also do the filters too. So paint on and wipe off. So we've left that overnight and we'll do the same process again. If you build up layers it kind of looks more natural and authentic. So 
so that's where we're at. And another layer. I think it was just three layers I put on this mask. So there's 24 hours between each coat or layer. And there we are. So I got hold of some, what would you call it, sort of uh, translucent, transparent, stick-on plastic stuff. And this is going to go on the lenses so you can't see the eyes. But what I plan to do is put some lights inside the eyes or inside the mask to kind of illuminate behind the lenses so we'll see what that looks like. So I'm just sticking on that gold shiny film. It says to use soapy water when applying this film, but I don't think I needed to use it. Use the soapy water on such a small part. I ended up trapping some bubbles in the film. I was going to redo it, but I thought the bubbles kind of looked like dents, so I left the bubbles in there. There's only a few. I, th I thought thought it was quite a good effect, which sort of complements the main mask paint job. But of course, if you want a clean look, then uh, you want to go careful putting the film onto the lens and make sure you push all those bubbles out. So there we are, that's the film stuck onto the lenses and that kind of gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. So now we're going to lacquer the mask, so I'm using matte lacquer there. So that's all lacquered up. We left that to dry overnight for 24 hours and now we're going to assemble the mask. So I stuffed in the toilet paper there, so just pushing, uh, pulling that back out again. So just farting around with an LED light there, just to give you an idea perhaps where we can install the lights. I might use some diffusers as well on the lights to kind of spread the light. And now we're going to fix the lens, the lenses into the mask. So I'm just cutting out the holes there, where the lens fits onto some knobs inside the mask. So just push those back into place. And there we are. I think that looks quite groovy. I'm just farting around with those LED lights there to give an idea perhaps where I'm gonna mount the LED lights. I'll probably use UV lights UV LED lights when I get around to installing the lights on this mask. So there we are. Now just attach the harness to the mask and we'll try it on to see what it feels like and looks like. So there we are, a relatively straightforward, simple job. And like I say in part two, we will install the LED lights. So here we are again on part two of making our steampunk gas, gas mask and in this video we will be wiring and installing the lights, the LED lights. So I decided on a kind of blue purpley colour LED, tried out a few LEDs, I was going to go for green but I didn't have any green LEDs but I quite like the kind of ultraviolet effect LEDs. So um, I was testing the LEDs with a 3 volt battery before we get started to make sure our components are working. And we'll also need a 9 volt battery with a two terminal thingamajigs on the top. Um, a switch, and in this case the switch has three terminals but you'll only need two. But as long as you use the middle terminal then you can use any of the other 
two terminals. I tend to use the middle terminal to uh, go straight to the live positive side of the battery. And when the switch is switched on to the on position, that'll go through the other terminals, whichever terminal you choose to power up the LED lights. So I'm just kind of cleaning up the mask at the moment and so just filing out the grill at the front of the mask there so we can get some light shining through those holes because we're putting LED in the behind that grill part. So I've got the helping hands there. We've got our cable wire. So I'm using red and black. Red for positive, black for negative. Cutting off appropriate length wire for our project. So we got six LEDs in total and they will be wired in series, three LEDs in series. Sorry, in a parallel circuit from the battery. So you'll have one set of LEDs in a line of series, three LEDs and two sets of three LEDs uh, wired in parallel. If that makes any sense. I don't think I'm explaining myself very well there. So I'm just uh, tinning up the cable ends there or wire ends and also tinning up the LEDs and applying our wire to the LEDs and then we'll put some heat shrink protection stuff over the top of the pins to avoid any short circuiting and making our circuits a little bit tidier, tidier as well at the same time. Yeah, so back to the, the wiring diagram. So we got six LEDs with two groups of three. You can see in the wiring wire diagram there. So they're wired in parallel and three in separate series um, wiring configuration. I hope I'm not confusing anybody there. I think I'm confusing myself, but it's relatively simple as you can see by the wiring diagram at the top. So we've got the battery going into the switch and then running into the two sets of three LEDs, which makes up six LEDs. I'm waffling on a bit here. So anyway, on the video, we've got, we're just, we're uh, wiring up our LEDs. We want six with those tails, as you can see, protected with the heat shrink, which I'm putting on there. And then we'll situate those LEDs into our mask. And as you'll see as the video goes through, there's an LED in each of the, um, what do you call them, the filter, the filter parts of the mask. We'll situate an LED behind the grill of the mask. Oh yeah, with a heat shrink, I'm using a lighter there just to shrink that around the cables. Being careful not to burn your components and melt your wires and all that type of thing. And testing the LEDs as we go through with a 3 volt battery. Don't test them out with a 9 volt battery because you'll blow the LED. So when you've got 3 LEDs working from the 9 volt battery, that's balanced out as not to burn out the LEDs. So the current running through, the voltage and current running through the group of three LEDs won't blow the LED but it will blow one LED on its own if you apply that to the 9 volt battery so use 3 volt LEDs to test your individual LEDs so now I'm using a hot glue gun just to situate the LEDs in place a bit rough and ready what I should have done really was uh, perhaps drill some holes and situated them in there a little bit more professionally but this will be okay this mask is going to be used for a video so um just as long as it lasts for that then we're happy but i might come back to the mask and perhaps redo and rewire and install the leds just so they're a little bit more secure they seem to work okay with the hot glue gun a bit budget and scarper 
but uh, it worked. So we got those two filters done with the LEDs installed. So now we're just testing out the light behind that grill and the mask. I'm going to hot glue gun that into place. And I also use some hot glue to go around the grill to kind of act as a diffuser and to dis displace more light from the LED. And hoping that that would spread some more light through the grill for our final result and effect with the light spreading through our makeshift diffuser. So testing our lights as we go. So um, it works out a 9 volt battery will power, power these lights for around about 14, just under 14 hours continuous, if that was to be switched on continuously. So I think that's ample. So just gluing the lights where I want them to be situated. So I want to situate some inside behind the mask lenses to kind of give that glowing effect behind the uh, metallic effect lenses. And you can see how to do that in part one. We just use some sort of metallic sticky stuff to give that effect and testing our lights as we go. With the battery, um, I glued the battery just behind the forehead. Um, I was looking for a battery holder so that so it would be easy to change the battery if you wanted to, but I couldn't find one. Well, I did find one after I'd actually finished wiring the mask, but that would be better to use instead of gluing the battery straight to the mask like I'm doing there but whether the battery when I'm gonna change when I if I get around to changing the battery when it runs out on this mask if I use it for that long then I'll put in a battery holder to make it easier to change the battery so in this case I'm just using one of those as you can see like the spade type thing just to fit on top of the terminals of the battery so just doing a bit of a belt and braces with the glue around the battery. And just getting those wires in place. Might be a bit hard to follow this video, so I might do a separate video on just wiring um, six LED lights to a nine volt battery. So you can just sit down and uh, go into more detail with the wiring process, but like I say, it's relatively straightforward. There's a couple of other videos on the channel with just basic single LEDs, LEDs with three volt batteries, but uh, the principle's the same. You just gotta know uh, what your components are pulling and what's appropriate to your battery size as not to blow your components. In some cases, you might need resistors, depending on what your project is so uh, yeah wiring the LED so with the tails obviously we've got our black and red there but we go from the battery into the switch into one LED out of that LED into the next LED out of that LED into the last LED on the series of three and that last tail goes back to the, neg uh, the um, negative of the battery. And that's on both sets of those three LED sets. Put some tin foil in there as well, just to kind of shield your eyes when you're wearing the mask from those internal LEDs. Plus to kind of reflect the light back out also so maximizing the light which is emitted from those LEDs. There, so there we are, job done. So I was quite pleased with the end result. So just trying it on there. And job done. So that's the end of this part two series. So of course in the first series we painted up the mask and in this, uh, sorry, in the first episode we um, painted the mask up and in the this video of course we uh, installed the lights 
I think Christmas has taken a toll on me and I can't talk properly in this video. So there we are. Thanks for watching and over and out for now.